Video contains spoilers for the story of Genshin Impact. There is no doubt that Genshin Impact is one of the most influential gacha RPGs in the recent years. Despite of having controversies with predatory microtransactions and loot box mechanics, this game has in-depth lore, storyline and compelling characters. In this video I'm going to investigate and theorize about one of its biggest kept secret that might reveal the ending of this game. If you have never played or heard of Genshin Impact, this video is not going to be useful for you. That is why I have put a number of links in the description that you can check made by other popular YouTubers so you can expand your knowledge of this game and also pardon my pronunciations because I'm not a native English speaker without further ado let's just get right into it on my adventures across the land of Tevat I once came across this floating island in the sky now the discovery of this island is nothing new since when I log to YouTube I see a lot of people have already made videos about it. From those videos I came to know this floating island is called Celestia. People of Tevat believe that gods reside over that island of Celestia. Barbados proclaims in one of his songs that heroes after death may sit on the throne along the gods in Celestia. We are also shown the picture of this door which resembles the door we see in the loading screen of the game. However, not an exact copy but very similar. I believe this door can lead to other worlds the same way this door lead us to Tevat. In your journeys, you might come across this NPC. Her name is Dr. Edith and she's a historian from Mondstadt. She talks about Vanessa, the founder of the Favonian Knights, who was believed to be ascended after her death to Celestia should her soul might protect Mondstadt for eternity. Whether the statement is true or not, we never know. The best view of the island can be seen from Storm Terror's lair. However, it's very rare find. Mostly, the island is hidden by clouds, as you see in this clip. I inspected this island from every corner, but it always faces the same way, which makes me believe that this island right now is just a 2D texture that has been paced in the skybox. The first ever instances of Celestia was shown in the cutscene of Zhang Li's friendship storyline, which makes me believe that he is very important to this topic. On the same storyline, Zhang Li mentions that his geo pillars were responsible for the formation of Gaiyun Stone Forest that we know now. During my investigation, I came across factual evidence that this island is not stationary. It can move everywhere on Tevat and once responsible for the cataclysm event that took place 500 years ago before our traveler came to this world. In ancient times, Liyue was a land of misery, where the shadow of evil loomed large. As slain gods festered, their vengeful wrath cursed the world, manifesting in infernal forms. In the Yaksha trailer for Zhao, we came across this clip where we see a spine of a dragon surrounded by pillars. Not only this is the same dragon that the word Dragon Spine Mountain is based on, 
but also this is the same dragon that Divalin fought and got wounded by it. Since after that Divalin was exiled from Mondstadt, Venti had no other option but to seek help somewhere else. Even though Venti got help from other Adepti to slay this dragon, the dragon was not fully destroyed. What you see here is the heart of Dragonspine Mountain. Yes, this is the heart of the so-called dragon. And if you stand close enough, you can still hear its beating thousands of years later after it was slain. Now the body of the dragon has been destroyed long ago, but its heart is still beating, which makes me believe at some point in the story, this dragon can be resurrected. But to resurrect such ancient evil, one might need a certain object, a key, an ancient artifact that has the essence of the dragon. Where is such object that we may never know? Now you might be wondering how Zhong Li and Celestia are related to the slaying of this dragon or perhaps the formation of the mountain. Well, Zhang Li in his statement claims that he's responsible for slaying of many gods during the Archon Wars, so it could be true that this dragon is one of them. Also, the Yaksha trailer is narrated by Zhang Li himself. And just like the pillars of Gayun stone forest, the mountain is also surrounded by pointy cliffs, which could be his pillars eroded due time. The timeline becomes confusing when it comes to Celestia. You may find this floating pillar on top of the mountain that is believed to be fell from so-called the island of the gods. Further inspection of this floating pillar might reveal that it looks very similar to the statues of the seven we found all across the vat. And also we see the pillars during the door sequence of the opening game. Now it makes me believe that all these things are somehow related back to Celestia itself. Dragonspine Mountain is not just the burial ground for the dragon, but it also used to be an ancient city once upon a time. With location names like Atom City Outskirts and Atom City Ancient Palace, this fact is indisputable. Further exploration in the mountains, we came across ancient structures which resembles the ones we found in Spiral Abyss and all the domains across the path, which makes me believe they are made by the same people. Also, the Tree of Wisdom from the domains looks very similar to the frost-bearing tree in the mountains, but this tree is red because it has been tainted by the blood of the slain dragon. In the center of the mountain, there lies a hidden chamber which can only be opened once you have done a certain amount of quest. Within the walls of its chamber, there lies a story untold that depicts what happened to this civilization or what led to its demise. We see the depiction of a godlike figure who used to give knowledge and wisdom to the people and who once also lived at the sky on top of the mountains. One day the gods disappeared and the civilization was lost to man and forgotten to time. Once a great city now lay low in snow and ruins. But why did the gods abandon these people? Are these the same people that we now know as the Abyss Order? A number of broken ruin guards can be found all across the mountain who whispers a secret message till this day. 
For the nation we can't forget his skyborne powers, but we failed. No wonder the sustainer of heavenly principle wants to destroy all humans from Tevat. And then we have the Genesis trailer. I'll let the trailer speak for itself. There was a glorious kingdom established among the heavens. From that kingdom came a crowned heir, tasked with seeking out the Genesis Pearl from the Kingdom of Darkness. The first crowned heir began her journey of seeking the Pearl. But she was deceived, and the memory of her noble origins faded. She now believed that she was the Queen of the Kingdom of Darkness. But take heart. A second crowned heir has already taken up the path where the first had stumbled. This is the story of your journey, of your tale to be told. We can see a clear depiction of Celestia bestowing wisdom and knowledge to the kingdom of men at the top of Dragonspine Mountain. We see this character that resembles Lumine, the other sibling, and a snake that resembles the Abyss Order. Maybe there is a reason the Sustainer kidnapped Lumine and turned her evil to fulfill the prophecy of this unknown princess of darkness. Or this could depict the Saritsa from Sneznaya. Then we see the prophesied prince, or so say, the traveler who can purify the darkness. Throughout the story it has been hinted many times that our sibling Arlumin is working with the Abyss Order. Not only that, the Abyss Mages refer to her as Your Highness, which makes me believe that she is the leader of the Abyss Order. I don't know much about Dane Sliff, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna play an important role in the coming stories. Even with the latest trailer of 1.4, by the time of this recording, we see when the Traveler is fighting one of the Abyss Harbingers, we get a glimpse of the other sibling, Lumine, holding a cursed sword. Now we can confirm that she is evil and one of the final bosses in the game. But what did she saw all those years ago that made her choose this path? No matter the case, we know that Lumine is very close to completing her goals as we see in the first ever launch trailer for Genshin Impact. But before she could do, she got the news of her brother's arrival to Tivat, reminding her of the all past events that happened. She couldn't confront her brother for some upholding destiny that she must fulfill, but she promises that one day when the dust is settled, they will be reunited. This refers to the ending of the story where we must confront her and purify her back to normal. This exact scene is also played in Dane's Leaf storyline as well, where we see our traveler's perspective on this scenario. I went to the exact place where this cutscene took place and waited for the sunset. And when the time came, I walked down the same road where Lumine walked the Ruin Guard in the first trailer. And what did I saw when I look up to the sky in the west is nothing but Celestia herself. This concludes my investigation on the origins and lore of Celestia. I can confirm the present day Celestia is taken over by the Abyss Order. That is where our traveler must confront their sibling for a final battle, where we must purify her in order to progress the story forward. You have reached the end of the video. I hope the information that I found was useful for you. Now I'm not a popular YouTuber or a Genshin enthusiast in any way, 
but if you think the context of this video is any useful, make sure to direct it to the right people, so they can make a better video about it. And I'll be seeing you with something else very soon.